Hello friends, in my previous video, I have discussed about DFT and how to compute in MATLAB using FFT, that is first Fourier transform algorithm. And along with that, I have uh, shown you the significance of zero padding when we require to pair zeros. Okay, and I have also shown you while discussing DFT that our point of interest frequency range is from zero to pi. That is, if we consider with respect to k, in in that case, the point of interest or area of interest should be zero to n by 2 that is DC to Nyquist frequency range okay so in my this video I am going to show you one very important and interesting application of DFT okay we will do kind of filtering action in a 50 domain okay so here I have written the code in the live script mode if you want you can directly simply write in a normal editor window also so CLC clear all close all obviously we can write if you want you can write warning off also now what we are doing we are taking capital N is equal to 32 this is well known for uh, DFT I hope you know this uh, that is small n will also vary from 0 to capital N minus 1 and K will also vary from 0 to capital N minus 1 if we want to increase the K value uh, then in that case zero padding concept comes right you know that so small n that is our time domain range is from 0 to 31 and the minimum frequency I have taken that is 2 pi by capital N which is fundamental frequency in the sampling of DFT in the frequency domain and then I am taking the sine signal sine omega n that is sine 2 pi by capital N into n okay and then I am using stem to plot that so stem comma x if I run this you will get this kind of sign signal pure sign signal okay as expected now what I will do I will perform the DFT or FFT of the same signal so my capital N is 32 so K will vary from 0 to 31 that is 0 to capital N minus 1 and I am here computing the FFT for 32 point okay so FFT of x comma 32 and then I am plotting the magnitude spectrum using ABS of G. If I do enter, I am getting this kind of waveform. And from this kind of waveform also, we can conclude what is the frequency present in our signal. See, uh, ignore this upper part because I told you from 0 to capital N by 2. Here that is 0 to what? 16 is our point of interest okay so if you consider this particular part that is single sided part that is 0 to 16 um, point see at k equal to 1 we are getting the peak that means the um, signal having in the input having the frequency corresponding to k equal to 1 and what is the uh, omega corresponding to k equal to 1 that is nothing but 2 pi by capital m into k here k equal to 1 that means 2 pi by capital n that is nothing but 2 pi by 16 and our omega is 2 pi by n only right so from the magnitude spectrum also we can conclude that okay fine we are getting the same now what we are doing we are padding one zero between each successive sample in the time domain this is also called as up sampling which you have already studied earlier I have shown you the code earlier also up in the up sampling video lecture so k equal to t, a k equal to 2, then y equal to 1 empty matrix I am taking to store the upsampled version of the signal and then here j equal to k minus 1 that means 1 0 has to be padded in between each successive sample then for i equal to 1 colon length of x, y equal to y of x of i and then if i not equal to length of x then for m equal to 1 colon j y equal to y0 okay like that the algorithm clearly I have explained while discussing the upsampling you can check that video okay so now let me just run this particular part and here you can see that this in between each successive sample of our sign signal 1 0 is padded okay here I hope you can see see in between each, each successive sample there is 1 0 in between each successive sample there is 1 0 so this is what about upsampling but is upsampling is only meaning just padding zeros in between two successive samples no 
like in between these two samples, we should get that sample which is missing here actually. So basically, generally what we do, we take the average of these two samples and we put that in the middle. This is one way, okay? Here what we will do, we will use filtering concept to get the exact sample between two successive samples, okay? So for that, what I am doing first, I want to check what is the effect of upsampling in the frequency domain. So here I am doing a 50 RS equal to a 50 of Y, that is our upsampled signal or sequence, comma length of Y. Length of Y is how much? See, our original X signal was having length, that is in total number of samples was 32. Because we, here we have taken n as 32, sin omega n as 30, n equal to 0 to 31. That means 32 samples was present in x. In between two samples, we are padding one zero. That, mean, that means how many zeros will be padded? 31. Because in between two samples, we are padding zero. Okay. So 32 plus 31 becomes how much? 63. So 63 point DFT we are computing here. R is equal to a 50 of y comma length of y. And then k equal to 0 colon length of y minus 1 stem k comma abs of rs. Alright, so if I click enter, we are getting this kind of spect magnitude spectrum after taking absolute part of DFT. So you can clearly see that 0 to k minus 1. So I told you, uh, sorry, k varies from 0 to uh, length of y minus 1. I told you length of y will become 63 because we already had 32 samples and we have added zeros in between each samples. So 32 plus 31 becomes 33. K varies from 0 to length of y minus 1. You can clearly see 0 to 60 here, 61, 62. So what is 62? Because 63 minus 1 is 62. So this is matching. The range is matching. Now what is the effect you just observe? I told you that 0 to n by 2 is our point of interest. So 0 to length, total length is how much? 63. 63 by 2, that is, uh, we, we have to take floor, floor obviously. So what is that? Let us check. Uh, 63 by 2, then you will get 31.5. If you take floor, you will get 31. So 0 to 31, that is up to this, what is our point of interest okay up to this 0 to 31 but i am plotting here the whole spectrum okay so see previously one sample at k equal to 1 was present but what is happening due to padding of zeros in between each sample when we are padding zeros obviously it is quite clear that frequency is increased because the signal will change very rapidly once it is taking some value positive or negative and after the next sample it is going down to zero that means it is changing in a very high rate that means some high frequency component must be added from the theoretical idea we can say that's what we are visualizing i told you the middle part of this spectrum is high frequency range that is near to n by 2 and you can see clearly near to n by 2 near to 31.5 that is if you take flow it will become 31. near to 31 these high frequency components is added which was not present in our previous case okay see in our previous case while when we have taken original signal our spectrum was this one that is near to 15 nothing was present again here this is coming due to the uh, mirror image in the complex domain but if you don't consider this this 0 to 16 only this part but now due to padding of zeros near to n by 2 we are getting some extra we are getting some extra uh, peaks okay so these parts are basically high frequency component now what we can do Simply remove this high frequency component. That means corresponding to 30, make the amplitude 0, 31, make the amplitude 0, 32, 0, 33, 0. This is 34, 0, this is 29, 0. Like that, make those 0. Okay? So, if we make those amplitudes 0, what will happen? Simple, that is kind of filtering only, right? We are removing the high frequency component. And you know in a 50 the high frequency component is basically in this part. 
don't think that you only remove this thing high frequency from this single sided spectrum that is 31 30 29 if you make those zero automatically this uh, 32 33 34 will become zero don't think that i told you our point of interest is from 0 to pi because if we get the information for 0 to pi we can easily get our information from pi to 3 pi by 2 to 0 that is pi to 2 pi we can get but those are present you have to, when you are doing filtering action you have to filter both side that is the from 0 to pi also filtering and same thing has to be replicated for the pi to 2 pi so when you are removing 31 30 29 you have to remove 32 33 34 component okay so that's what i have done here so 28 29 30 31 32 33 34 35 all these components i am making as zero okay so 31.5 was our uh, middle part so above that four part uh, below that four part i am making zero now I am taking IFFT. Okay, so we are we have filtered and we are taking IF we have taken IFFT. So that means our signal will now have not that much uh, rapid change. So what will happen? You know, see, uh, I am plotting this. So here we are getting magnitude and then and they are zero. Then again magnitude, then and they are zero. Then again magnitude, then and they are zero. Better let me here just use plot command. It will be clear. If I do control enter, see this peak, these peaks are coming. Now we are filtering the high frequency, that is, we are removing the high frequency. So this much rapid change in between two samples will not happen. It will become smooth out. Okay. So that means somewhat here we will get our signal. Okay. So let me make it same again. So now if I do control enter, here you can clearly see what is happening in between two successive samples previously we were getting zero but now due to removing the higher frequency component that is closer to n by 2 because you know in the dft closer to n by 2 that high frequency components are present when we are making them zero that means we are removing those components so now the zeros which you are raising to higher frequency component is now low pass filtered and in between two successive samples we are getting almost a continuous type magnitude okay why 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 it is happening you know see what it is given real component of complex data so our after ie50 it is giving complex value so better to give real okay so see after real we are getting this one okay so i hope you have understood this that how the frequency components can be removed okay and remember one thing very very important often students do mistake when you are removing something for the k in between 0 to n by 2, replicate the same thing for the range n by 2 plus 1 to n minus 1 for those k values. Do the same. Okay. Then only effect will come outside. Otherwise, you are removing one part and in the other part you are not removing in the same spectrum. So, it will not work. Our point of interest is from 0 to pi. But when you are doing filtering, you have to take care of the whole range. Because those are also present. Why we are taking only 0 to pi? Because other part information we can simply get from 0 to pi only. Okay. But while doing filtering, take care of both the part. Okay. So like this, we can uh, make up sampling and get the one sample between two successive samples in a more accurate way. Okay. I hope you have understood this concept. This is all for my this video. Thank you for watching.